going to have a look at the second option of the Canvas workspace and that is the offline version, the one that we put onto our PC so that we can access it without an internet connection. So the first thing we have to do is go to brother.co.za in our internet browser, click on the official site, scroll down, go to find support, now we'll go back to the Brother Solution Center. Then we're going to search for our product. And then we are going to choose the SDX series. Now for this exercise, you could choose either one of them, but because I'm focusing on the SDX series, I'll just simply choose that. Now we're going to go back to the download tab because it was under the download tab where we downloaded the machine software and it was below that that we found the utilities. Now if we have a look here there is the Canvas workspace download. Now if we download this it's going to allow us to use Canvas workspace offline. In other words without an internet connection but you must first have registered with the online version and created your ID and your login. So you cannot download this unless you have registered with the online version. Now what we're going to do is just before we download this, I want to chat quickly about the scan and cut type converter. Now this application allows us to create cutting or drawing data for character pins using true type fonts that are on our computers. So in other words, we are no longer going to be limited to those 14 fonts that are built in on the machine. We can now use any font. As long as we've got this uh, scan and cut type converter, we can choose any one of the fonts on our computer as long as they are true type fonts. Now I'm going to show you how to download it and how to use it. However, since the introduction of the new version of Canvas Workspace. This is not really that necessary anymore, but I'd like to show you how it works anyway. So off we go and we're going to download that. So once again, we need to go and agree by pressing the big blue button. The download has now started. But once again, if the download doesn't start automatically, you would just click here but I'm happy because there it is there. Now they talk to you about how to install it. Now to install this, you are going to, after you've downloaded it, you're going to see that it's downloaded in a zipped format. So we are going to have to go and open that or click on that file and unzip it first. And then we're going to save it. And then each time we want to use the program, we will just double click on the saved file and it will open up the font converter for us. So let's go and have a look at how that works. So here I have my download. So I'm going to say show in folder and there it's sitting at the top of my folder, of my download folder at least. So I'm going to just click on that and my computer is now asking me if I want to open it. I say yes. It's going to unzip it, but I want to unzip it to a folder that I choose. So I'm going to choose on my desktop and I'm going to put a new folder and I'm going to call it font converter. So there it is there. And I'm going to unzip it to there. Now once it's unzipped to there, I can close this window and close that window and close the download window and then I'm just going to minimize this window because we're going to come back just now for the scan and cut canvas workspace download. So here you can see is my font converter. So now every time I want to use it all I do is I click on it. Now just to go back one step, you'll see I have chosen to put it on my desktop, but you can put this folder anywhere that you like. I'm putting it on the desktop because it's easy to find while I'm making these videos. So I'm going to click on that 
now all I do is I click on the file and it's going to open the scan and cut type converter so what I'm going to do to make it a little bit neater in the background is just minimize the other window so now all that I have is my scan and cut type converter open now this is the little bar that we type our word into so for example if I want to type the word happy I can now go and choose any one of the fonts that are on my computer already so I can scroll through and I can choose any one of those that I fancy so once you've chosen your font you will then be able to choose the font style either normal bold italic bold italic demi bold or demi bold italic and this will change depending on the type of font you have chosen but let's just go with bold now the next thing is we can choose the size as far as the size goes it doesn't really matter what size you choose because this is not cast in stone because what's going to happen is once we have saved this file we are going to open it with the online canvas workspace and there we will be able to change the sizes and edit and manipulate to our heart's content so it doesn't really matter so let's go and preview what that looks like so this is what it's going to look like when we bring it in on canvas workspace but we can also change our character spacing so if we preview that quickly and have a look at it you'll see that the length is 78.9 now if I go and I increase the spacing and I preview because you won't be able to see anything happening up there you have to open your preview window now you'll be able to see that the length has increased and the spacing between the letters has also increased now this once again is also not cast in stone because you can change all of this once you open it on canvas workspace but let's just go back now we're going to go in the opposite direction because you can actually decrease the spacing as well preview now you'll see they are closer together but once again on canvas workspace you can manipulate it there as well so it really is not that important to change the spacing and it's really not that important to worry about the size the main thing is to get your font right and whether you would like it bold or bold italic etc so I'm going to just put that back to the default of zero millimeter spacing and then we are going to preview it for the last time close it and now we're going to save now when we save it you'll see it's going to save it as a .fcm file so that is a file for our cutting machine so what we can then do once we've saved it is we can send it to our scan and cut but before we send it to the scan and cut we can also open it in canvas workspace and edit it even further so let's save this but I don't like to have numbers because they are kind of meaningless so I'm going to just delete all these numbers leave the dot fcm though and just give it a name so it's happy dot fcm now I would like to save it on my desktop under my scan and cut 2020 under my project and there I have got a folder called words so I'm going to just save it in there and I'll just save it as happy now if I want to do any more words I can just delete that word and then I can type more in and continue now let's go and have a look at opening our canvas workspace so let's go and open now I've put a shortcut on my actual opening screen so that it's easy to get to it and we're just going to close this for a minute now what I want is I want to open a new project so we click on open a new project now in the previous video where I showed you the tour of the canvas workspace this is now the online canvas workspace I showed you that you can import any 
SVG, DXF or FCM files. Now the one that I've just saved is an FCM. So I click on that, choose the file, I go to my desktop, go to my scan and cut, go to my projects, go to my words and there is my happy. So I click on happy, open it, OK and there it is. So now I can select this all by left clicking and dragging, right clicking and saying group so that it's one unit. I could also have gone to edit, select all and then group. So there are two options for that. Now if I decide that I would like these letters to be individuals, then I can simply right click and say ungroup. Now each letter is individual again. So you can move them, you can overlap them, you can change the spacing between them and you can really play around with that. And then once you are happy with your arrangement, you can then download this and send it to your scan and cut machine and tell it to either cut or to draw. So that is how simple it is to use that font converter. Now we're going to go and have a look at the PC version of the Canvas workspace. Now we're going to take a look at downloading the Canvas Workspace version that is for our PC. In other words, the version that we can use offline. But please remember that you need to have first registered with the online version before you come and download the offline version because all the information that you give for the online version will be linked to your offline version. So let's go to Downloads. Click OK, go down to the Utilities and find Canvas Workspace and click on that. Then we are going to just agree to the license agreement and the download will start automatically. So this is now going into my download folder. But once again, if the download doesn't start automatically, you could simply click there. Now once you have started the download, they explain to you how to install the program. But before they explain how to install, they also tell you what is new in the latest version of Canvas Workspace Offline. So it's very important that when you open the online version, when they tell you that there is a new update, to the offline version that you download that so that you always have the latest information. Brother is continually improving both the online and offline versions so that we can use our SDX machines or any of the previous models with absolute ease and it just makes it more fun to use. Now in this latest update you will see that they've given us the fit to path function which allows us to type in a word and then either create an arc or create a full circle from those words. So that's the latest feature. Now obviously this page will change as new updates become available and then they give you a whole lot of other information that relates to the Canvas workspace. And then finally they explain to you how to install it. But I'm going to show you that right now. Now we're ready to install the downloaded folder. So we just right click, say show in folder and you'll see it's there in your download folder. So it's in downloads. So we'll just click on that and then what will happen is it's going to start installing. So it will ask you if you want to allow the app to make changes. So you say yes. Then I'm just going to minimize this back window so you can see the process. So now it's busy setting up the Brother Canvas workspace. So we say next, install.
and then you click finish. Now once that's done you'll see it automatically puts a little shortcut on your desktop. Now you can leave it there or you can move it to wherever is convenient for you. It is also stored under your program files so if you need to open it and you don't want it on your desktop then you're going to have to go to your program files to open it from there each time. Now once it opens they will talk to you about the new features of Canvas workspace but we've already had a look at those so we can close those. Now when you open this it's going to look very different to the online version but most of the tools are there except for obviously the, the online tools. So let's quickly take a tour through it. You'll be familiar with your pattern collection, so if you have bought any patterns, they will have been imported into your offline version. So that's the pattern collection. Now I have the calligraphy kit and then I also have all those designs. The ones that say not activated are the ones that I haven't yet purchased. So let's close that. Then you'll also have seen that there were all of the projects, the scan and cut projects, the canvas workspace projects at least. Those are all of the free projects. But if you need to find them again, you just click on that little icon and that window will open. So now we're back to the pattern collection and the canvas projects. So you can still access all of those free projects. So now I'm going to close that window because I don't want to use any of my patterns and I don't want to access any of the free projects. Now you'll notice that there isn't that extra block for you to create your new projects. That is because it's included in this window of the main Canvas workspace. So let's just close this window because we don't need it. I'm going to just maximize this window so we can see the entire screen. Now let's just take a quick tour through our Canvas workspace offline version. Now in the video just before this I showed you that you could use your font converter to access all of the fonts on your computer. Now what's happened in the Canvas Workspace offline version is they've included that function in this program. So now theoretically you don't really need the font converter anymore. So let's quickly start off by taking a look at the text and then we'll come back and do a complete tour of this Canvas workspace. So let's start with the text first. So you click on the text tool and you'll see up at the top here there is your little drop down box for all of the fonts that you have on your computer. So now instead of being limited to the ones that are on the actual scan and cut machine you now have them all inside the offline canvas workspace. Now remember that they are not available on the online workspace but they are available on the offline workspace. So now we can go down and we can choose any one of these fonts and type a word. So let's type in happy. Now once you've typed your word in this is your little tool to deselect so that's a very important one to know about because now you can get to your word and you can resize it, you can rotate it, there are a whole lot of things that you can do to it. But the most important thing that I wanted to show in this video is that you now don't really need the font converter if you are going to be working with Canvas Workspace offline. So in the next videos I'm going to show you all the interesting things that you can do but for now I just wanted to highlight the fact that you can access all of your fonts. Now this is the little drop down menu here and you can go and scroll through and once you've 
typed your word it's easy enough just to go and change it simply by going to that drop down menu and choosing a different font. Now I'm going to take you on a quick tour just as an overview of the Canvas workspace to show you what tools are available. Then we're going to come back and do a project and then I'll show you how to save and export and do all those good things. But let's start off along this top bar. We'll look at these later on but for now let's start up here. First of all this is your undo button so whatever you've done you can undo and whatever you've undone you can redo. This is your little selection tool so if you want to select something to add to it or alter it or edit it that is the tool that you would use there. Then this is a little hand tool. Now what the hand tool does is it allows you to move your cutting mat up and down on your screen. Now to release the hand tool you need to go to the select tool then it deselects the hand tool. Over here you can zoom in or you can zoom out. Then over here if you have got something on your mat that, that you've already added like a pattern or a word you can now tell the program whether you want your machine to cut it or to draw it. So you'll see now this won't be a cut file anymore when you export this to your scan and cut machine it will want to draw it. So you can in the Canvas workspace now actually tell the machine what to do with this file. Then if you want to fill anything with color and we're going to come back and look at all of these just now you can fill with color, you can change outlines, you can change thicknesses of borders, you can change lines to either be solid lines or dotted lines or dashed lines or spaced dashed lines and there's a whole lot of options to choose from. Now this option is really for when you are creating score lines so that's what that is for and we now know that this is where we can go and change or select different fonts. We can also set the text style we can also set the spacing between text and then this here is if you want to add crystals. So those are all of the little tools that you'll find along the top but now if I deselect the word you'll see all of my other little options have disappeared so in order to access them you need to select something first. So let's just deselect that because now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the little tools down the left hand column. The first tool is going to take us back to the canvas project and our pattern collections. You'll notice that your projects that you save on the online version are not available here but you can go to any of the patterns that you have bought. So for example, I've bought the calligraphy set and I've got these 25 designs here. If it says not activated, it means I haven't purchased those yet. So let's close that. Then once again, if you want to go back there, you click on that. And then if you want to access any of those free pre-made projects, then you need to go to the Canvas Project tab and now you can access any one of those. So let's close that. Now the next thing that's available to us are all of the shapes. Now as far as the shapes go, these are all of the ones that are on your Canvas workspace online as well as on your machine. But they are here again as well. So you can scroll through and have a look. Now to close this you just click on the icon again so to open it you click on it, to close it you click on it. Now we know about the text so we'll discuss that in more detail just now. 
If you want to import an SVG file, then you simply would click on the SVG icon. So any of the SVG files that you have saved on your computer, you can collect from there. If you want to do any image tracing, in other words, bring in a JPEG, PNG, GIF or BMP file, then this is the icon that you would use. Then if you decide that you would like to do a little bit of your own drawing, there is a pen there for you to draw with. Now this is also available on the online version and you can draw any kind of shape and even draw a closed shape if you wanted to. Then down here is the freehand path. Now this is the pen that you can draw squiggles and wiggles with. And if you need to delete anything then you select it and simply hit delete. So it's there's your little selection tool, select it and delete. Then the very last one is placing rhinestones which we'll discuss in another video as well. So these are all of the tools that are available to you. Now if we go over to the right hand side there you're going to see we have got properties. So let's first of all select the word so that the properties can be be activated. Now the little paintbrush up at the top is for properties and then if we go down one there's a, another window for doing editing and if we go down another one there's one for rhinestones, another one for creating layers or looking at our layers and then the last one is an artboard. So let's start off by looking at properties. Now under the properties you can tell the machine here whether you want to cut or draw just like we did up here. But now instead of going up there the whole time we have all the properties in front of us on the right hand side. So we'll select cut. Now once again here are all the full colors but they are here as well. So if you wanted to choose a full color you could go to the color palette and choose that and say OK. Now just bear in mind when you color a design in like I've just done now the scan and cut doesn't recognize color it only recognizes the outlines so if you wanted to color this in you would have to use your draw function and the fill function to tell it to fill it in. But the reason that they allow us to fill with color is just so that we can see the different parts of our designs which I'll explain to you when we get to look at layers just now. So it just makes it easier for us to distinguish which parts of the designs are which simply by having the color option. Then you can go and change your line width, you can change your, your outline pattern. So if you would prefer to have a dashed pattern, so the machine would cut a dashed pattern instead of a solid line. If you want the outline to be thicker, you can make it thicker. So this, this would relate more to your drawing than cutting. The dash pattern obviously would relate to your cutting. Then here we can also change our fonts, so we can change that word to a different font if we want to. Then if we want to undo that, we click on undo. And remember you always have to select so that this pane will open. Now as far as the character spacing goes, you can space over here as well, as well as up there. So all of the tools that are up there now become available to us on the right hand side once we have selected our design that we've created. So now let's move on and look at the editing options. Now I had clicked on the editing options but I need to also select something to actually enable the editing options. If something is deselected they all get grayed out. So you need to first select by clicking on it. 
and now they all light up not all of them but the ones that will apply to what we have on our cutting mat so first of all let's start off up at the top it's telling us now the position of this design on the mat along the x-axis which is that way and then along the y-axis which is that way we can change the width of our design so for example if I decide that I want to have that a little bit wider or if I want to have it a little bit higher now you'll see everything is happening in proportion that is because the maintain aspect ratio is ticked if I turn that off and I change just the height you'll see just the height changes the width remains the same so if you want things to be resized in proportion then you need to have maintain aspect ratio turned on if we want to transform it now transform we can either rotate or we can flip now you can flip from side to side or from top to bottom but let's look at the rotation first so you can rotate one degree at a time and you could also go and type in how many degrees you wanted so you can either use the arrows or type in a value then if you want to flip now flipping is important for when you are cutting heat transfer or iron on vinyl so you need to flip that before you cut it so you would flip it here if you want to flip it in other words mirror it then you could use that one there so now it's flipped it on its head then you'll notice that the align object is not lit up in other words it's grayed out we cannot use that that is because this is only applicable when you have got more than one design on your mat and I'll do a separate video on how to align objects just now but we can use our process overlap and that I'm going to discuss when we actually have a project that we're going to create because then it will become more meaningful you can also now convert this so instead of it being text we can convert it to a shape but once it's converted to a shape you cannot change any of your font options or your outline options or any of those options because it will now be seen as a shape instead of text so we'll discuss that later as well the offset also we'll discuss in a later video because that also will be applied in a project that I show you so those are all of the editing functions and they are found under the edit tool now the next tool relates purely to adding rhinestones so that will also be a separate video on its own and then layering now as far as layering goes this is a really important function to know about particularly with heat transfer vinyl so I'm going to do an actual project using heat transfer vinyl and I'll show you the end result once it's cut as well and we'll discuss the layering there now the last one is your artboard now that is simply your cutting mat as it is displayed on your screen so you can change things about that for example if you're going to be working with a longer mat you can change that if you would like to see your ruler or your unit measurements in millimeters or in inches you can change that there you can ask to have the ruler on the outside shown or not you can also view the matte image or not you can also show the grid or not so simply by turning those little ticks on and off it will change the display on your screen 
Now snap to grid is a really nice one to know about because if I go and I turn on snap to grid and what I'm going to do is I'm first just going to rotate this and make it a little bit smaller so that you can understand what snap to grid is and I'm going to just place this in between lines on my cutting mat. Now if I go to snap to grid and I move the design it's going to snap to the closest line that is your horizontal as well as vertical lines so if I try and move it in between lines it's not happy it won't do that because it's wanting to snap to one of those grids now this is a very handy tool to have especially when you are working with text and you want to align things perfectly so for now I'll turn off the snap to grid so now I can move it to wherever I want and you'll see it moves smoothly it's not trying to jump onto one of the lines it just allows me to move it to wherever I want it now as far as the grid spacing goes you can have your grid spacing larger or you can have your grid spacing smaller so you can adjust all of these things under your art board so now we've discussed all of the little tools on the right hand side we've dis discussed all of the little tools along the top bar and all of the little tools down the left hand side now we're going to move on and do an actual project now we're going to have a look at creating a basic design just so that you can see the flow of using the program and the steps involved once you understand the basics then it's going to be easier to build on that and use more and more of the tools so let's start off with something basic the first thing I need to do is to get rid of what's already on my mat so I can highlight and delete or I can go up to file and select new now with the online version of canvas workspace you also have the option of creating a new project so instead of it being in the place that you are used to on the canvas online version you need to know that you need to go to file and click on new so we're going to say don't save what was previously on there and it will then just get rid of everything and it will give us our new blank page or our workspace so to keep it simple we're going to go and we're going to type in a word again and we'll stick with the word happy now remember to deselect your text tool you click anywhere outside of that box so anywhere will release the text tool and then it's going to put a block around your word which is going to allow you to resize it either from top to bottom side to side or corner to corner you'll also be able to rotate it now when you select the word you'll see that all of your properties will be displayed above your mat however those same properties are displayed on the right hand side of your mat but you need to make sure that you are on the little paintbrush so that the properties are open now personally I prefer to use the properties on the right hand side of my screen I just find it easier but if you prefer to use the properties above the image of the mat that's also fine because they are identical so up here and down here are exactly the same the other important thing is if you have got nothing selected the properties will disappear so there's nothing there and we can't use anything here either so we need to select the word first before we can access the properties now let's go and have a look at what we can do to this word or what I'm going to do to this word to keep it very basic the first thing is I'm going to check what operation has been applied to this word so in other words what will the 
scan and cut machine do with this file once it's open on the machine. Currently I can see it is set to the cut operation. So when this goes through to the scan and cut it's going to know to cut this design. However if you prefer to draw it you can then change that to your draw option. I'm going to leave it on cut because that is what I plan to do with it. Now if we, um, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here so that you can see, if it was going to be a file that was going to be drawn then I could have filled it with colour and I could have changed the outline but since it's just a cut file the scan and cut is only going to cut around the outside lines I'm not going to use any of these. I'm also not going to change the line width because it's just going to cut it. I'm going to stick with the aerial font and I'm going to leave it set at the regular style. I could change the character spacing if I wanted to so I can increase it or I could decrease it. So that would be entirely up to you. Now you'll also notice that the little tools under the properties bar at the bottom are not operational. If I click on them nothing happens and the reason for that is that these tools will only work if there is more than one design on your cutting mat. So if you ever encounter a situation where your tools are greyed out it simply means that those tools won't work with whatever is on your mat. So now that I'm satisfied that I have done all of my changes to this design, I need to save it. So let's go and have a look at our options. First of all, we're going to go to the word file and then we're going to select either save or save as. Either of those will work. So let's click on save. Now it's going to ask me where I want to save this. So I'm going to my desktop, to my scan and cut folder, to my projects and to my words. Now you'll see that the file name here is untitled and the type of file that it's going to save it as is a CWPRJ file. Now that simply stands for Canvas Workspace Project File. But I like to give my projects titles so I'm going to take out untitled and I'm going to type in happy. So now I'm going to tell it to save. So now it's saved it in that file. So if I minimize this quickly and I go to my folder that it's saved in, so it's my projects and words, you'll see there that it says happy CWPRJ. Now the problem with this file is that we cannot send this to the scan and cut machine. It doesn't read that file extension. This is here so that we can open it again in Canvas Workspace and edit or do whatever we want to it. So that is purely a file for Canvas Workspace projects. So let's close that and go back to our workspace because now that we know that bit of information we need to save this in a format that our scan and cut will read. So we're going to go file and you're going to go down to export FCM file. So we click on that and it's going to say where do you want to export it to. So I'm going to say to my desktop, to scan and cut, to my projects and to my words. But this time it's going to save it as a .fcm. Now that is the language for the scan and cut machine. So that's perfect. So we'll say save. Now if I just minimize this again, go to my scan and cut folder, go to my projects, go to the words, you'll see there that I now have happy CWPRJ and happy FCM. So the FCM file is the one that I can send to my scan and cut. So now what I would do in this instance is pop a USB flash stick 
into my computer, right click on the FCM file and then say send to, let me just click on it, sorry, say send to and then I would send it to my USB stick. Now I don't have a USB stick in there right now so it's not going to give me that option but I would say send it to the USB stick. Once that file is on the USB stick I can pop that into the scan and cut and it will cut it. But if I put that file onto the stick the scan and cut's not even going to open it. So let's go back here and if we needed to ever open that file again we would just say open and then we would go to the folder and then open that file. So you can see it's only seeing that file at the moment because that is its language. So let's close that. Now if you don't want to use a USB stick you could also have plugged a cable in and you could have transferred the FCM file to your scan and cut via a USB cable that's plugged into the scan and cut and plugged into your computer. However, if you would like to transfer it wirelessly, then you also have that option. But you must realize that if you're going to use this option, you would have to connect to the internet so that you can access your wireless router. Now, obviously, you would then turn your scan and cut on and have it connected to the internet as well and then you can choose this option. So now it's telling me that there's an error and that's because I am not online. So I'll just close that and I'll quickly go online and connect and now you'll see once I'm connected it will allow me to actually use that option. So if I go to my transfer file via the internet, now you'll see it's allowing me. So you need to be connected to the internet in order to use that function. Now it tells me the machine is ready to download, so I would download it exactly the same way as we did in the online version. So in other words, I would go to my scan and cut, turn it on, make sure that it's connected to the internet, I would then click on retrieve data and then select the wireless option and then this word is going to pop over from Canvas Workspace over to my scan and cut machine. So those are all of the important things that you need to know about saving. So remember it's save or save as will save it to your computer and once it's saved it's going to be in that CWPRJ format which won't work on your scan and cut, it will only work if you reopen it in Canvas Workspace. So if you want to send it on a USB stick, then what you're going to do is you're going to export it as an FCM, transfer it to the USB stick, or transfer it via a cable. But if you want to transfer it wirelessly, then you need to connect to the internet. So those are all the basics of creating something and saving it. Now just before we move away from this word happy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut this file and then I'm going to draw it so that you can see the difference and be able to compare the two results. So the first thing that I did was I just shrunk this down a little bit so that it's smaller and then I've left it as a cut file. 
I haven't filled it I've only got an outline so then what I did was I went and said transfer this FCM file via the internet I'm not going to worry to save it because it's not a file that I'm going to keep forever so I just want to send it via the internet and then I will cut it so there it tells me that it's ready to be downloaded by the machine and now I'm going to move across to the machine so now I'm over at the scan and cut machine and it is connected wirelessly so I just click on retrieve data and then I click on the retrieve data wirelessly so it's now brought in my word happy from canvas workspace so now I'm going to quickly cut that and show you the result and then I'm going to show you how I would transform that word into a draw file So this is the end result of the cut file of that word happy. Now I could have cut it from any material but I have chosen to cut it from the heat transfer vinyl or the iron on vinyl as it's often known. Now just one word about the heat transfer vinyl. When you do cut it you need to make sure that you flip or mirror your image. So just before I cut it I went into the object edit and then I went and I flipped it so there it's the right way around there it's now upside down because you always need to cut the iron on vinyl upside down now there is a whole video that is dedicated just to cutting this so that will be covered in that video so now that you've seen the results of the cut file let's go and turn this word into a draw file so there I've selected the word and now I'm going to change the operation from cutting to drawing so now the scan and cut is going to draw this design instead of cut it so off I go and I decide I need to change this full because I would like the scan and cut not only to draw an outline which I could choose if I wanted to but what I'd like to do is I also would like to fill it so I click on the full color and then I go and choose a color so in this case I'll just choose black and then I'm going to just leave the outline on so it's going to draw the outline and then it's going to color it in for me so now what I'm going to do is I say file transfer file via the internet then I'm going to go over to the scan and cut and open it Now I'm over at the scan and cut machine and Canvas Workspace has sent my design across wirelessly. So there you see it on my screen but if you have a look at it it's solid. So in other words the scan and cut is going to draw the outlines of the word happy and then it's going to fill that word in in black for me. So now I need to replace the blade with a pen. So I'm going to just unlock the blade and remove it and then in its place I'm going to put the universal pen holder now the universal pen holder can take any store-bought pen and so uh, what I've done is I've taken one of those permanent markers and I'm going to pop that into the machine so it's very simple it's exactly like the blade works you make sure that the brother name is facing forward drop it in where the blade would have gone tap it down lightly and lock it in place so it's as simple as that so now I'm going to load my mat and I'm going to select draw instead of cut and then I'm going to show you the machine in operation so now the scan and cut is busy using that permanent marker that I'd installed into the universal pen holder and all I did was I loaded my mat I scanned the mat and then I dragged and dropped that word onto 
the actual cardboard. So now it's busy filling it in so it will draw the outlines of each letter first and then it's going to color them in. So once it's done you'll see it will eject the mat and then you'll see the end result. Now just a word about the universal pen holder. It is an optional extra. The machine does come with a small pen holder and a set of small pens but you can only use those small pens in the small pen holder. The universal pen holder is different in the sense that it has an adjustable barrel so you can fit most writing pens into that holder. So you would just adjust the size of the barrel so that whichever pen you choose to use it will slip in there and fit in snugly. Now this is a way cheaper option than having cartridges and you can also choose the colors as you require. So now it's almost done and there it is. So it's drawn each outline and folded in. Now up to this point I've discussed all of the properties that I could apply to what was on my mat. The other properties that I haven't discussed yet we will use when we get to the more advanced projects. The same thing applies to the editing function. As far as the editing function goes there were certain of those functions that I couldn't use because they didn't apply to what was on my workspace. So when we get to those more advanced projects then we'll be able to use those functions. Now we're going to talk about the rhinestone function. This will also be discussed in a more advanced video simply because it will apply to the optional rhinestone kit. Now if I go across to the left hand side to the shapes you'll see that below all of the regular things that we get with Canvas Workspace there are also the premium kits. So these ones the rhinestone stamp for line embossing and uh, region embossing as well as foiling those are all premium kits that are purchased as extras. So if you've purchased the rhinestone kit then what I'll do is I'm going to do a video specifically on rhinestones. Now the next thing that I want to take a look at is layers because the layers help us when we are working with more than one design on our mat at a time. So you'll see I've clicked on that little icon for layers and a new box opens and it shows my text over here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select that text and I'm going to say duplicate. So now I've got two of those words and you'll see there they are there. But what I'd like to do is with this one that's currently right on the top, I would like to select that and then I'm going to go back to properties and I'm going to change that full color. So I'm going to make it red and now you'll see that if I go back to my layers, it's put the happy as one layer in red and the happy in yellow as another layer. So now if I would like to move these layers around or swap them I could go to arrange and say send to the back. So now it's put the red layer at the back and the yellow layer in the front and there you'll see up at the top that the top layer is yellow and the bottom layer would be red. Now this is very handy particularly when you are cutting heat transfer or iron on vinyl and you want to create a shadowed effect. You can also do this obviously with paper and card and self-adhesive vinyl and even fabric but 
specifically when it comes to the heat transfer vinyl you often need to shadow your writing or your text so now what is really nice about this is you'll see over here that you can say whether it should be a cut file or a draw file but I'm presuming now that we're going to be working with cutting files what you can do is you can actually lock these layers so now nothing will make these move you can't even select them so this is a nice function because once you've got everything perfect if you lock it in place then you can't accidentally click on it and make it move even one millimeter so that is your lock function there so I'm just going to unlock them quickly because if for some reason you don't want to see the red layer say you needed to focus on the yellow layer you could also hide that red layer so it will then disappear so that's what the little eye is there for now you see it now you don't so the layers is quite an important function or a very important function when it comes to being able to manipulate how your layers display and also so that you know which part will be first which will be second and if you've got more than one layer it's particularly helpful so that is the story with layers and then when we get to do a project and I'm going to do a project with the heat transfer vinyl I'm going to show you how to also use the layer tool again now we've already discussed the artboard so that means we have now covered all of the little icons that are down that right hand column so now we've come to the end of the basics of using Brother Canvas Workspace, the PC version or what is also referred to as the offline version.